morning. So we just finished Rosh Hashanah and now the end of this week is Yom Kippur and that time frame between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is called the Sar Sumei Teshuva, the days of introspection, the 10 days of Teshuva. It's very interesting how right after we finish Rosh Hashanah, this heartening and inspirational day, we jump into a fasting, right? We have some Gedalia. What happened? We learn a very important lesson here about priorities. So let's delve in. Gedalia was a fellow Jew, and he ended up being killed by Yishmael ben Nisanyahu. What ended up happening was Nebuchadnezzar had already destroyed the base of and most of the Jews had been exiled. And there were some Jews who actually were able to stay in Eretz Israel, and Nebuchadnezzar appointed Gedalia to be the governor to like lead these Jews specifically. And Gedalia informed the Jews, like, come, it will be a safe place, you know, the land of Yehuda. You can come here and we can prosper and live and all will be good because Nebuchadnezzar has told me it's fine. However, shortly after Gedalia assumed this leadership, Balas, the king of Ammon, hired Yishmael to have him killed. And Yochanan, who was a friend of Gedalia, came to warn Gedalia about what was happening. He's like, hello, you have this gentleman, he's going to come, he's going to kill you, you've got to protect yourself. You know, can I go kill him first? And Gedalia refuses to accept that this is true. And he says, no, absolutely not. He's not going to come kill me. There's no way. He refuses to accept it because he considers it Lash and Hara. What ends up happening? Yishmael comes and ends up killing Gedalia. Now, Gedalia is blamed for the killing of the rest of the Jews that were in that land. Because there is a rule where if Lash and Hara, whether it's true or not, could harm someone or yourself, you need to take precautions. So whether it was he gets ready to battle, whether it's he gets a bodyguard, whatever it might have been, he should have taken precautions just in case. But he was so set in stone and not listen, listening to Lashon Hara that he ended up getting killed as well as all the Jews that were with him. There's an important lesson and that's learning the priorities, the balance. A lot of times during a Sarah Sumei Teshuvah, people will take on extra things. I am going to keep Chol Yisrael. I am going to keep Pas Yisrael. I'm going to, whatever it might be, everyone takes an extra step. But sometimes what may seem as a priority could actually be a negativity and you need to seek guidance. Yeshiva Bachram will come home and they're going to be, I'm going to be stringent on XYZ, but then it can cause some friction at home with the parents and that's not ideal. Or, you know, husband might say, okay, I'm going to stay late every single day for davening to learn and not let his wife know. And then all the kids are hungry, dinner is cold, and the whole schedule is thrown off, and it causes shalom bias issues. Those are sins. They're not a chassid. They're not a step towards progress. They're not something that will actually help him grow. It will make it decline. Things simple as if you're going to a wedding, right? It's a huge mitzvah to make the chassan and the kala happy. However, if your parents babysat your kiddos, you gotta respect their timing. Don't stay until you're the last person at the wedding because it's not fair to your parents. Your parents are expecting you home at some point. It's not respectful. Same goes too for a young babysitter. Yes, she's younger, but she's still young. And there's many reasons why young girls should not be staying out late. So it's, it's, a, it's a balance. You gotta figure out your priorities. There is a lot of things that we can claim as this is what I'm taking on, this is my new thing, or I'm not going to listen to Lashon Hara, and it can end up being negative. Understanding priorities is imperative. Being piously stringent or even exceedingly good at someone else's expense is wrong. And tragically, Gedalia's improper stringency in Lashon Hara led to the desolation of the land of Israel for 52 years until Jews started coming back from Babel. Had he lived there, would be no uninterrupted Jewish habitation in Eretz Israel until the second Beis HaMikdash. We fast because of his death. We fast for the devastation of Eretz Israel and to acquaint ourselves with proper priorities in life. As Rav Segel notes, in the closing of Zom Gedalia, he says, May we make proper use of this day and come to Yom Kippur as sincere and complete Bali Teshuvah. Priorities are important. Let's make sure we prioritize correctly. Have a wonderful day and a great week. Take care.